Donald Trump's words strike a powerful chord with those who hold individual autonomy and self-defense close to their hearts. The right to own a firearm isn't just about personal safety. It's about defending the very essence of freedom in a world that can be unpredictable and, at times, dangerous. This right connects deeply with the values of self-reliance and personal responsibility that resonate across various walks of life. If you take away guns, she wants to take away everyone's gun. If you take away guns, you can't do it because people need the guns for protection. Now, entertainment, they want it, hunting, they want, you know, different things, but they need weapons for protection in this country. People live out in the woods and they're not going to have a gun. If you look at it, some, some countries, I don't want to go, I don't want to get them in trouble, but some countries have actually gone the opposite way. They had very strong gun laws and now they have gone the opposite way where they allowed people to have guns, where in one case they encourage people to go out and get guns, and crime is down 29%. And remember this, what is the toughest gun law in the United States? Chicago. On July 4th, 117 people were shot and 17 died. The toughest gun laws in the United States are in the city of Chicago. You know that. They had 117 people shot. Afghanistan does not have that. Afghanistan, by the way, was the lowest point in the history of our country, in my opinion. That was the worst embarrassment to the history of this country. And I say Putin would not have gone into Ukraine if that didn't happen. When he saw the incompetence of Milley and all these guys that are incompetent, when he saw that happen, when they took out the soldiers first, they took out the soldiers first. You know, if you go back and check your records, uh, for 18 months, I had a talk with Abdul. Abdul was the leader of the Taliban, still is. But I had a strong talk with him. For 18 months, not one American soldier was shot at or killed, but not even shot at. 18 months. And then we had the disaster of the, of the lift where people were falling off airplanes from three times the height of the World Trade Center. I mean, terrible. But uh, now our country has to be respected again, please. When Trump says that people needed guns for protection, it's not merely a statement. It's a declaration of the fundamental belief in the right to self-defense and the duties that come with personal freedom. The Second Amendment is more than just a legal safeguard against tyranny. It's a cornerstone of what it means to live a life of autonomy, where individuals are empowered to protect themselves and their loved ones in an uncertain world. This philosophy isn't just about owning a gun. It's about embracing the unpredictable nature of life and recognizing the responsibility each person carries for their own safety. Trump's remarks highlight a broad spectrum of cultural beliefs about personal security. They tap into a deep-seated anxiety about safety, reflecting a belief that neither government nor law enforcement can fully shield us from harm. This perspective is rooted in a fear of vulnerability and a desire to exert control over one's environment. For many, especially those who feel their safety is increasingly at risk due to rising crime or perceived government overreach, Trump's words resonate on an emotional level. His stance on gun rights is seen by supporters as a defense of the fundamental freedoms that define America, while critics view it as a dangerous endorsement of a culture steeped in violence. These opposing reactions are driven by underlying values and fears, whether it's the fear of losing individual freedom or the dread of rampant gun violence.